Yeah, we're joined by Kit Redding from our team, um, and who's going to be taking you through our presentation today, Deciphering SEO. Um, we're going to be talking about all things search engine optimization, and especially with uh, reports. There's a lot of reports that you can run on your website. Uh, and we're going to dive a little bit into how to use these tools uh, to determine what needs to be fixed in a sort of priority sequence. Uh, what are some of the things that you can fix on your own? Um, it's going to be awesome. It's going to get a little technical, but uh, we've got uh, a solution. Um, and that is that the Digital Transformation Grant 3.0 is still um, available right now. So if you haven't connected with your digital service squad, um, we definitely recommend doing so to learn about the grant uh, and your eligibility and whether or not you might apply. Uh, and we'll have our details at the end of the presentation. Um, just to remind us, this is being recorded um, for uh, use on our YouTube channel. So you can always rewatch uh, later if there's anything you missed or want to catch up on. Um, and just a note, too, that here in South Georgian Bay, this program, so Digital Main Street and the Digital Service Squad, is managed by the Small Business Enterprise Center. And we've just, we have additional support uh, from the County of Simcoe, the Town of Collingwood, and the Town of Blue Mountains. Um, and so, yeah, just want to give a shout out there to uh, our partners in making all of this possible uh, so that we have continued programming um, since basically 2019. We've been able to keep this program going, keep the supports going for South Georgian Bay businesses, which is amazing. Um, so, uh, that's it for me. I'm going to hand over to our resident SEO web expert, Kit Redding, uh, to take you through our, our presentation today on deciphering SEO. Great. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate everyone for uh, coming out today. And uh, as, uh, as Ben was saying, we're going to do a little run through on, on SEO and uh, talk a bit about some of the uh, some of the terms that uh, that you might be aware of or at least heard about, and uh, run through some of the aspects that uh, if you've seen an SEO report before, what uh, <clears throat> what uh, what you might uh, might see in that report, and uh, and perhaps a little more information on on why you're seeing those items there. So uh, going to progress on to the next next slide here and uh, and get into it. So. Why is SEO important? <clears throat> Most of your users arrive to your website via searches from Google, which I'm sure everyone's quite familiar with. And uh, with that in mind, you know, there's about 50% of that traffic coming from Google. So when it comes to uh, making sure that your site is optimized for Google, it's, uh, it's a pretty important aspect of your, of your, uh, your SEO mix. Then uh, you know, followed by that fifty percent, you'll uh, you'll see likely Facebook coming in around five percent, and YouTube probably another five percent, depending upon how active you are in those particular channels. So, with regards to uh, why SEO is important, well, you know, when we look at that fifty percent number, that's a pretty big number coming from Google. So, really, what you want to make sure is that um, you you are optimized for SEO and um, making sure that uh, the site that you do base your business off of is, uh, is, is set up and, uh, and configured the best possible way in order to maximize your effort and uh, to make sure that uh, you look good in Google's eyes. What are the benefits? Well, users tend to select from the first few results on the, the search engine rank page. And, uh, and so it's important to make sure you're in that, uh, that top 10 list and uh, even top three if you can. The top three is a, is a, is a tough spot to, to, to get into. So, uh, you know, if you get into that space, it's, uh, it's usually some, some, uh, some magic you've done and, uh, and Google is, uh, is, is happy with what you've got going on with, uh, you know, most, uh, most strategies around SEO tend to look to target that top 10 result. And so that's, uh, that, that's sort of the key area you want to make sure that your, your pillar content is, is, is ranking for. SEO from an organic perspective is definitely a, a longer tail, but um, is definitely far more consistent. And I'm sure if anyone on the webinar here has uh, deployed email campaigns, run some social campaigns, other kind of events, 
you'll likely see when you hop in your analytics that you'll see sort of peaks and valleys that are tied to these uh, campaigns you've run. And uh, as much as they do generate great traffic to your website, it's, uh, it's something that you want to really make sure that, um, you know, with an organic strategy, you do have that nice sort of long tail effect that uh, you can keep maintaining and uh, obviously keep, uh, keep your organic traffic flowing through to, to your websites. But um, obviously, it's, uh, don't, don't neglect your campaigns and your spikes because those do generate great traffic and are great for, for conversion. Organic SEO is technically free. Uh, however, there are some resources required to optimize for, for SEO and generate content to drive traffic. And that does have a cost. So you want to make sure you've got your internal team set up. Or you know, if it's something that uh, you don't have the resources for, then it's uh, the, it's always great to to reach out and sort of build out that extended team. And uh, whether or not that's those are freelancers, your web developer is always a good place to start. Or um, you know, there's you can always reach out to uh, to us here on the Digital Services Squad, and uh, and uh, we can uh, we can have a quick chat to see sort of how uh, how how you can kind of get that set up and make sure that you're optimizing for for your SEO on your on your website. Doing organic SEO is definitely more sustainable than if you were to go a paid route, and uh, and that's why it's quite uh, quite important to make sure it's part of your part of your mix when it comes to your digital footprint. Google AdWords do definitely help to, to drive traffic and, uh, and qualify your, your particular content that you are trying to resonate for. So uh, some paid campaigns are, are definitely valuable when it comes to your SEO and uh, is definitely part of that, uh, that full service, service mix when it comes to putting together your, your campaign. So as much as uh, it's important to make sure that uh, you've got the, the resources and horsepower to be able to work on your organic SEO, Paid media definitely does have some influence and is, is always great to make sure you include. Does Google know who you are? Eventually Google will find you, but if you have a new site, you're best to initially submit your site map to Google via the search console. Then Google will pick up on your site and content much faster. Search console is a very important part to your, your SEO and uh, it definitely can uh, shed a lot of light on the analytics and how people are finding you, what they're searching for. Uh, they've got a new aspect now that dives into the web core vitals, which is Google's new ranking algorithm that tries to mirror experience on your website and tries to really sort of mimic what users are doing when they get to your website. And so it's something that, um, you know, it's an important piece to what you've got going on. And uh, those that know of Search Console will are probably shake, nodding their head right now. Those that have not heard about it, do a Google search, uh, check in with your web developer. Maybe he's already got this set up for you. Or uh, like I was mentioning earlier, we here at the, the Digital Service Squad are more than happy to, uh, to book, a, book a meeting and kind of run through what this looks like and give you a bit more detailed look as to what you've got going on with your website and, uh, and, and coach you through some of the, the analytics you see there to make sure that you're able to make informed decisions as you're working through and starting to understand your, your SEO program. If you don't, uh, and it's also a good thing to make sure you've got your, your site map in place and, uh, and it's, uh, it also helps uh, Google sort of understand who you are and the type of content you've got and, uh, and all those sorts of things. So, you know, it, that's another piece to, to make sure that uh, you're able to kind of make sure that Google has, the, uh, has a good sense of who you are and the content you've got and how you can best, uh, best resonate for it. A few important pieces for making sure you're setting up for success. Your domain's a pretty important part when it comes to your SEO strategy and program. The domain actually, the name of the domain doesn't have any influence over how you're ranking for certain keywords. Back in the day, a lot of businesses used to try to pack in a number of keywords into their domains to make sure that they were ranking well and that they, uh, they, uh, you know, resonated for the particular keywords in terms that they wanted to make sure that they were ranking well for. 
Google got fairly smart around those sorts of activities. And uh, at this point, really, it's important to make sure that you come up with a, a domain name that really is relevant to your business, that's quite easy to communicate to your uh, potential clients and uh, make sure that uh, they understand how to find you, where you are, and those sorts of things. Now, there are very important parts to how long you've had that domain and your domain rating, and those do influence what, uh, how Google will rank you. However, with, uh, with that in mind, that is really just a matter of time and activities. And uh, a lot of businesses, you don't have a lot of influence over how that domain rating does, uh, does creep up. But um, you know, as you're putting through your SEO program and strategy in place, the more activities you've got, more traffic you get will ultimately start to bump up that, uh, that domain, domain ranking score and, uh, and help you uh, improve results to your, your website. Top level domains. <clears throat> Most of us are quite uh, familiar with the .com and .ca, although staying true is always the best uh, way to available Oh, looks like we might have lost Ben. Um, can everyone uh, can anyone hear me? See what's going on here? Oh, looks like Ben's back on, and uh, I'm going to kind of carry through here as long as everyone can. Ben, are you seeing people chatting in here? Reconnected. Looks like Ben might be frozen. Okay, looks like we uh, heard from Scott Davis, and we're uh, we're still live. So it looks like it's just you, Ben. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna carry along here, and uh, it looks like we're we're in good shape. So. When you're looking at the uh, your top level domain, there are many options now available for for TLDs. They're referred to, you know, in the digital space, we we love our acronyms. So uh, uh, top level domains are, are are referred to passionately as TLDs. Uh, you can get some interesting names like the dot uh, business dot coffee dot car, and uh, you know, I, I'd only really sort of encourage going that way if. Uh, if it's really important to make sure you've got an on-brand domain name with uh, the best, uh, best options are always to try to stick to the .ca or .com. And uh, I always recommend as well going with a .ca because uh, with the .ca that geographically anchors your business and Google understands that. So anytime you've got that opportunity to, uh, to go with a .ca, it will help your, your rank keeping in mind that uh, you want to make sure that with this strategy, you are most of your, your clients or your demographic are coming from within Canada. If you do happen to have an uh, international audience, then um, the .ca is not as relevant. And so the .com and, or other, other options are, are more than adequate there. But um, if you do generate most of your sales from within Canada, then uh, I always do recommend to look at that .ca and, uh, and consider going that way. If you're on a .com right now and you do have a .ca, you know, you probably don't want to go and make that full switch. So um, it's, uh, it's not sort of a reactionary thing where you've got to go home tonight and make that switch over. But um, if you are a new business and you are just working to launch your, your website or SEO strategy or working on a business plan or whatever that may be, then uh, considering the .ca is definitely going to help your, your ranking within, within the Google spaces. I, uh, I've got my business off a of .media and Ben, I think you do as well. <laughs> and we can both probably attest whenever we're sharing our, our email and uh, with, uh, with potential clients and that sort of thing, I always get, uh, is there a .com or a .ca? And I don't know, Ben, do you get that same sort of question by going with some of those new top level domains? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, it definitely confuses people. Um, and cause it's so new or some, you know, to a lot of people, it's fairly new. 
Um, but and that's why I actually um, reverted my email to a dot com, <laughs> BeFreshMedia dot com. Uh, I mean, one of the reasons, but it was, yeah, I figured the benefit there is uh, avoiding confusion. Um, but it is really cool. I mean, it, it does open up a lot of opportunities as well. Like a lot of dot coms are taken, um, whereas, you know, the um, the dot media dot arts, the dot agency is, you know, lots of opportunities there um, to find the domain that you really want and can use. Yeah, exactly. And I think the other thing as well is some of these these uh, these new premium top level domains are are sometimes fun to pick up for marketing campaigns and that sort of thing. So they're great for that. And um, the other other thing that's always worth noting as well is reputation management. So even securing a lot of these domain names that are relevant to you and your business that are tied to your brand, it's always a good idea because uh, you know the last thing you want is someone spinning up a domain name that uh, that hurts your hurts your brand and hurts your reputation. So always make sure that you do grab that if, if that's something that's in, it's important into most businesses it is. Your website platform, which is where you build your website, host your website, all sorts of things. And there's so many different tools out there with regards to how you build your website out and, uh, and how your, your SEO sort of is, uh, is implemented and rolled out in that sense. So most common platforms either inherently integrate SEO features and best practices or can be added as an app or plugin. WordPress is a pretty popular website builder and I'd probably argue most people on the call are probably on WordPress unless you're, a, you're an e-com and, and then you might be uh, supporting our Canadian friends in Ottawa uh, using Shopify. But, um, you know, it's uh, WordPress is definitely the, the powerhouse out there. And I believe this year, their latest stat is they're powering over 41% of the web right now. And uh, so it's pretty, pretty incredible. They have that sort of market share for, for the website space and, and even e-com for that matter with their WooCommerce. But, um, you know, they've got some great extended features with, with regards to SEO and realize how important it is. Some of the key plugins you might uh, might take a look at there if you are on WordPress or, or Yoast SEO is a popular one. And uh, the new kids on the block there, are, are they're, they're, their name is called Rank Math, which is one I've been using quite a bit lately, which is great. The reason why Rank Math is, is so great is that they they are new. And so how they've built their plugin and the, the, the code they've used is very lean. There isn't any performance aspects that can uh, negatively impact your site. And they've got some great ties into the Google services, which really allow for some fantastic insight right within your, your Google, your, your WordPress admin. So you can, uh, you can connect your search console and you can connect your analytics. And so when you start looking at some of the uh, reports that Rank Math is, uh, is actually sharing with you within your WordPress admin, you can get some pretty, pretty interesting insights as well as some actionable items right within your WordPress admin panel. The other feature that sort of that really works well and it's integrated well into, into uh, WordPress is when you are generating new content, Rank Math does mm -hmm. give you some coaching as you're adding your content and uh, in doing so, you can take a look at how you're scoring and, and they'll give you a score out of 100 and, uh, and, and usually it's a, it's a green, orange, or, or red light. And if you're red light, you want to make some changes, but, um, you know, it can really help you with regards to why you're not scoring well and give you some, some coaching parameters that, uh, are actually pretty easy to, uh, to make change to a lot of the common basic SEO setup within, uh, within WordPress and rank math is, uh, you know, you've got to make sure that you've got your, your keyword defined for that particular content. And then that keyword needs to sort of trickle down throughout your content within your, your, your title tags, your meta description, your header tags, right into your, your introductory paragraphs and things like that. So, um, you know, there's definitely some, uh, some interesting uh, insights around that. Oh, it looks like we just got a quick question here from Tracy. I'll jump over and pick it up because it sort of popped up in front of me here. She was asking about uh, WordPress versus Wix. Um, 
I don't have a lot of experience with Wix. I know it's it's a popular and very easy way to get a website spun up. It sort of plays within that same space that Squarespace does. Uh, so, you know, I, uh, I like the flexibility and scalability of WordPress. Uh, I do understand that some SMBs may not have the, uh, the budgets to, uh, or, or the resources to build out a WordPress, a self-hosted WordPress site. But, um, you know, if you are looking to grow your business, you know, starting up with a Squarespace or Wix is, is always a good way if you just sort of need to get something out there and get going. I'm sure they've got uh, an SEO integration that uh, allows you to at very least sort of set up your basic SEO elements and then, uh, and then uh, sort of launch your website that way. And, you know, if it comes down to having no website at all or having a Wix site, then get your Wix site going and make it happen. And it's just important to make sure you've got that that digital footprint out there and to make sure that, uh, you know, you've got that space where, where people can find you. But um, uh, most of my work I do is within WordPress. And so it's something that I always sort of put my hand up and, and that's, that's sort of the direction I tend to take. But uh, I might bounce this one over to Ben and just see if he's got any further insight on the Wix platform and uh, and how it, how it sort of plays well with SEO. Um, well, even from a uh, usability standpoint, I've helped a few uh, of our clients with uh, Wix websites, and actually more and more lately, to be honest, which is interesting. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I find, as you said, like they're all kind of very similar, like the Wix and the Squarespace. Um, but, uh, and I have experience with WordPress as well. And I'm starting to see the, the draw to Wix a lot more because, um, you know, when it comes to WordPress, like, yes, it's very modular and it, you know, there is that kind of uh, DIY um, ability to it, but it still can be pretty technical. You know, when we talk about some of the uh, plugins that you can add, some of the themes you can add, uh, it changes a lot of the, the um, placement of where you can find settings, right? And so to me, that's kind of the main thing is like, uh, at least with Wix or Squarespace, um, all the settings like where to plug in your um, your Google uh, Analytics code, uh, where you know where to punch in any um, tag managers, like all those things, your Facebook Pixel, they're always going to be in the same place. Whereas like with WordPress, it's a little hit and miss. It can change. It can you know depending on what plugin you're using, the theme you're using, it might be all over the place. So. Um, so that to me is, yeah, one of the kind of main draws uh, that I see for business owners to, to use a system like that. You know, it's just kind of more simplified. Um, but yeah, certainly, I mean, if you're working with a web developer, they're probably going to want to go with uh, WordPress, which also makes a lot of sense because, you know, there's a lot more capabilities there. But um, yeah, if you're going the DIY route. Yeah, I would say I wouldn't push. I wouldn't push someone away from Wix or Squarespace or um, those kind of systems. Yeah, it's also worth noting too that WordPress.com does have uh, a service as well that's very much in line with the Squarespaces and the Wix of the world too, which you don't sort of need to have that server knowledge, server setup, you know, the the, the full kind of DIY kind of uh, website build. And, uh, you know, you can, can get a, a WordPress.com account and, and, and get some pretty, pretty good theming in there. And, and it's a little more user-friendly on the back end of things as well. So probably worth mentioning that too. So great. Uh, Going to carry along here on the website platform side of things. And, um, you know, we did talk about Wix and, and Squarespace and, and, and those are referred to as, as SaaSes, which are software as a service. And, uh, and do make things very, very simple. If you do happen to go with the, uh, the, uh, the, the self-hosted WordPress route on things, it's pretty important to make sure you've got uh, a pretty, pretty good, reliable hosting partner to make sure you've got your site hosted. Um, performance is such a critical part with regards to your SEO and how Google is, is perceiving you. And, uh, and really, you know, it's important to make sure you've got that that performance piece in, in place. One of the analogies I, I always like to, to share with people since uh, a lot of what I, I talk about is, is, is somewhat on the technical side of things. So I like to, I like to, 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 to make it a bit more relatable. And, uh, and so on the, on the server side of things, you know, you can, you can have a, a Ferrari of a website that you've spent, 
you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on with, uh, with a developer and, you know, all the fancy bells and whistles and everything there. However, you know, if you're not with a good solid, solid hosting partner, it's, it's like having flat tires on a Ferrari kind of thing. So you really need to make sure that you've got that solid uh, hosting provider set up that uh, is able to provide the horsepower to your site to make sure that it performs well. And then, uh, and it's also a very simple, simple thing to, to set up and make sure that you've got that checkbox checked. And then if you're continuing to have any sort of performance issues, then, then you can start to dive into the code and, uh, and, and, and hit your web developer up to make sure that everything's fine tuned and that that sort of thing. Uh, and then of course, you know, the, the the classic callback to the digital service squad as well. We're here to, to help in that space too. So, you know, if you are noticing that your site perhaps isn't performing or you've had some negative feedback from uh, potential clients or visitors or users, then, uh, you know, by all means reach out to us here and uh, we'd be happy to kind of run through that or even do a bit of an audit for you to make sure that um, we can shine a light on some things that maybe uh, maybe you weren't aware of and uh, and help that uh, help that out. The other important side to hosting is, as I was talking a bit about earlier in your domain name, going with a .ca, if the majority of your, your business or users or visitors are coming from within Canada, having your your server located on Canadian soil can definitely help your, your SEO as well. And really it comes from making sure that you're able to deliver the data from your website to your user in the most direct path and the closest path to where they're coming from. And so having your, your site hosted on Canadian soil is, uh, is, is, a, is another good, um, good thing to, to consider when you are looking at, at your hosting and uh, most reputable hosting providers will offer that, uh, that to you. They, most of them do have various locations, uh, data centers around the world and, uh, and, and are able to, to offer that. If, if they don't, it might be a bit of a, of a, of a, of a red flag to, to maybe go and look around and see if there's something that, uh, another provider that can offer that to you. It's not as critical as it used to be. Um, I'm not sure if anyone on, on here heard of CDNs before content delivery networks. So with, uh, with a CDN enabled on your website, then, uh, and most of the tools do it, like the Squarespace, the Wix, the WordPress, things like that, they'll, uh, you, can, you can enable that, that CDN, which uh, essentially it distributes your, your content around the world so that when your users are, are, are visiting your website, the CDN will pull the data and content from a server location that's closest to where that particular visitor is coming from. So, you know, uh, it's not as, as critical, but um, whenever I'm setting things up, I always like to have the best possible scenario. So I always will host on Canadian soil, usually Toronto, Montreal, or Vancouver, depending upon the client. And then also enable that, uh, that CDN as well to make sure that the content that's being delivered is as close to the user as possible. User experience. UX. I'm not sure if uh, anyone's heard those terms. So there's there's probably going to be a lot of technical terms in, in this in this uh, presentation. So uh, bear bear with me on this. And by all means, if you uh, need something uh, clarified, throw it up in the chat, or uh, or we can always follow up after. But um, UX is a pretty important piece, and it's something that Google has always struggled with over the years. You know, most of their their data that they look at, and uh, and I refer to Google because. They are the, the the major search engine out there, but there are other platforms that uh, like Bing, which is Microsoft solution, and things like that too. So all these uh, these ideas and concepts that we're running through are are relevant for other search engines as well. But um, Google is definitely leading the way in this space. With user experience, Google has always been very mechanical and data and science driven in how they're able to rank their uh, rank various sites through their algorithm. And um, as of this past summer, they've, uh, they've, they've been able to really sort of get closer to what, uh, mirroring what that user experience is like through their, their bots and algorithms, which is, uh, which is pretty cool and pretty scary at the same time. But, um, you know, as it relates to user experience, uh, Google has a number of factors it takes into consideration in its ranking algorithm, algorithm relating to positive user experiences. You know, these markers are unknown specifically because that would give uh, give all of us uh, an advantage over Google, so they don't uh, don't release those. But um, 
you know, uh, there are some best practices that that you you'll you'll want to make sure you follow and 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 make sure you integrate into your your SEO program. Some of these are always deliver your content over a secure HTTPS, and uh, hopefully most of you are already doing that. Most of the major SaaS is out there like Squarespace, Wix, and Shopify, WordPress. You know they are all doing that, and um, an HTTPS is just a secure protocol that transfers data from your website to your user and back and forth. And when it's secured, it uh, protects your user. And uh, back in the day, you used to only need need that for for ecom based on credit card security, but um, uh, it's now important for for every aspect of the the visitor experience when they're browsing your website. So always make sure you've got a secure HTTPS that you're delivering your website over. The design of your website is, uh, is, is, is should be professional and appealing to your audience. Um, you know, Google doesn't have a lot of insight as to you know if your site looks good or not. But uh, what this does do is it basically sort of portrays this level of professionalism to your your user and your your, your visitor to your website, so that you know a good design is what looks good, and uh, and that's going to mean that you must be a good business because you've got a good design, and and that's sort of what people's go through. That's what goes through people's minds. So you know, always make sure you've got a, a visually appealing website to uh, to attract your your audience to. Over 80% of your traffic is likely coming via mobile. So make sure your site is mobile friendly. Uh, you know, uh, the easiest thing to do is to load your site up on your website and browse through it and make sure that everything functions the way it should function. Uh, you'll probably see a nice little hamburger menu up in the left or right corner. And uh, the hamburger menu has been made popular by mobile. And uh, what the hamburger menu is, if we don't know that, is uh, the three horizontal lines. And uh, <laughs> we've probably all seen them. Maybe we didn't know what the name was called, but uh, that's, what, uh, that's what it's there for. So uh, you know, make sure you've got uh, a mobile responsive uh, site that is friendly. And uh, you know, as it relates to designing, we did have a Wix question earlier. So I, I would have to assume a number of people on the, the webinar here are, are, are potentially building their own sites out and, uh, and wanna make sure they're optimizing. So, you know, the easiest thing is most of these, uh, these tools now have a, a mobile rendering tool within the, uh, the admin. So uh, you develop the website for mobile first and, uh, you know, make sure that everything you build out for your website is within that mobile space and then take a look at what it's, it, it, it renders like on a desktop device and uh, and if there's anything further you want to enhance the desktop experience with then then go that way but um, definitely when you're building out a site if you are, are are sort of handy that way or looking to take that on then um, making sure that you've got uh, you, you, you're developing for mobile first is is definitely the best methodology here for sure one thing that a lot of people when they're putting their their, their sites together is uh, they, they they forget about the fact that a large number of the audience out there actually has visual impairments. So make sure your text is readable and not too small. And you can actually, if you are using WordPress, and I'll, I'll refer to WordPress most because that's where I've got most of my experience, but um, within WordPress, you can actually add in some uh, a plugin that will uh, take care of a lot of the accessibility requirements that can really improve that user experience, everything from increasing font size, changing colors, turning on audible cues, things like that. So, you know, when you are building out your, your, your website, making sure that it's accessible is, is something that uh, is, uh, it should be, should be a top of mind when, when putting, putting a site together. And uh, the great thing about, um, about the, the Google search console as well is that it can give you some, uh, some accessibility cues as well if you're uh, if you're not ranking well or you've got text too close together or it's not large enough or things like that then uh, then they can they'll give you some some feedback on that as well so make sure that you're you're always taking care of people that that might have uh, have some accessibility requirements avoiding pop-ups or surprising animations or things that you know might jar the user experience is something that uh, you always want to be cognizant of um, so many times I've gone in to help, help clients in their navigation and, and you know, they've got a, a menu item on the, the top of their, their website that you click on and it just bounces over to another uh, YouTube or something. And, and that's just a very sort of jarring experience. So making sure that, uh, that you've got, uh, 
got that kind of in check and you know you don't have um, pop-ups going all over the place to sign up for your newsletter as much as that's a very effective strategy google is starting to uh, to rank negatively for that sort of experience so um you know those are those are definitely some things to to, to keep aware of and, and that sort of thing i don't know ben do you have any sort of uh sort of gotchas from a from a user experience perspective that kind of throw you off or kind of raise your eyebrows as to why that's happening um, well, yeah, I mean, so, uh, one of the things that, I mean, you kind of mentioned it too, like, um, with links and stuff, I mean, we try to look, it's always hard with the digital audit to find, you know, everything, but we really try and find, you know, any broken links. Um, that one's a big one, you know, uh, definitely doesn't, uh, bode well with the user experience. Um, uh, I think, um, uh, with the digital audit, yeah, I mean, we try and look at, um, essentially, yeah, I mean, anything that's gonna help that uh, experience and connect with people even more. So even things that are not broken, um, but, uh, you know, something like video, for example, can help um, create a better user experience, can, um, can communicate things better. Uh, and so I know that does help a little bit too with your um with your ranking but a lot of the um, user experience as yeah, well think, just comes down to common sense too you know i think if you were to try and put the the hat of your visitor on and, and go through your website if there's some things that sort of seem to catch catch you off guard when you're browsing your your website after you've spent hours and hours building it then uh then you know make sure that you sort of address that or or if you you are building your website and also reviewing it maybe take a day off and uh, and do your review after because sometimes as they say it's a bit tough to see the forest from the trees so just make sure that uh, you know if yeah. you're going through it you're uh, as a user you're you're kind of uh, happy with the flow and nothing seems to kind of catch you off guard well and yeah speaking of flow like one of the things that um, that we see a lot of but it's hard to um, it's a hard thing to correct or, or get people on board to really put some energy in and in thought into uh, is the main navigation. Um, you know, we see uh, from time to time, like navigation that's just loaded with uh, options, right? Uh, because um, as people are developing their website, they think like we want all the options up there available. Um, but, uh, but they don't think about how confusing that can be. And so, uh, what we really try and push, uh, with our squad is especially like, uh, simplifying that menu, you know, keeping it very streamlined, um, you know, having sub menu items to, um, to really, again, streamline that process, make it easy and, and, um, make sense for people, you know, looking for something specific, this is how they might find it. Um, but again, it can be a hard thing to wrap your head around and, and it does take time um, and, and energy to correct it or get it, get it to a point that's more simplified, but it's definitely worth the effort. Yeah, less is more, you know, that's a great, great note there, Ben, as well. You know, when you, uh, I, I'd encourage most to try and try and keep their, their main level to, to three or four items or less. And uh, yeah, it's a lot more work because, you know, everyone wants to put everything in that that main menu because that's that's right front and center but um yeah i'd encourage encourage everyone to go back take a look at their site and uh, and see if there's a way that they can you can organize that information better and uh, and try to kind of put it in common groupings you know i'm a big whiteboard guy i think it's great to grab a whiteboard and just start to to map out what that what that might look like and try to come up with common groups to to, to put different different areas of your content together and uh you know the bet if, we, if there's companies like bell and rogers they can they can minimize their menus to, to three main items you know considering the size uh, of their organization then you know i'd encourage most smbs to kind of take on that same challenge and uh, and try to try to make that 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 much simpler and and that will help your seo as well uh even you know it, as well as the user experience coming up with a really nice information architecture that is is well noted and and uh, nice permalink set up that Google can follow and trace and, and get through your content. Then you know um, that 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 schema that's in place will 
will definitely help Google find your content and do, it does make things a lot easier for them. So that's a, that's, that's a, great, uh, a great point to make there for sure. Speed and performance is huge. And I, I talked about the, the Ferrari a little bit earlier. You know, it's, uh, it's such a key piece and, and, uh, and probably the last piece to, to Google's uh, sort of uh, algorithm puzzle they've been trying to kind of put together. They've been really pushing mobile performance for, for quite some time now. And, and now they're looking at it right across the board. And so making sure that your, your website is 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 performing well and fast and uh, you know with the uh, the latest Google algorithm update the web core vitals it's definitely something that's caught a lot of websites and developers off guard because um, the elements that Google is looking at are definitely uh, uh, very they've been troublesome for a lot of developers to actually fine tune and actually put together. Uh, a strong strategy that doesn't have a lot of calls to a lot of different third-party scripts and sites and things like that to make it work. And, uh, and so that's sort of been the, at least been the theme for in my world for the past little while is, is really just taking a look and, and reviewing sites to see how their, how their performance is stacking up and being able to make sure that, uh, that it definitely is, uh, is, is running well in Google's eyes. And it's such a, such a key piece and I can't stress enough. And, and really the, the key components are making sure you've got first and foremost, a fantastic web server, super fast, reputable. And then the other aspects are just making sure that, you know, there aren't a lot of, uh, of extraneous calls to various scripts and style sheets and different services, because every time that a call is made off your website to a third party, that just takes that much longer. And so making sure you've got a, a lean, a lean site setup is, is is so so key and so critical, and um, it's great to see that a lot of these platforms that we talked about earlier definitely are aware of what's going on here, and they're they're making making improvements there. A lot of plugins, a lot of themes, and as I refer to plugins and themes, that's uh, that's WordPress nomenclature. It uh, they're all starting to really bake in performance metrics into uh, performance features into the the tools and software that they're actually developing too so it does make it a lot user for the end user for a lot, lot easier for the end user um they may be hiding these features from ben but um we'll uh, we'll make sure we uh, we we find those in wordpress <laughs> but uh uh it's it's such an important thing and ben i'm not sure do you get a lot of people coming back from the the audit that are sort of having some performance issues and uh, struggling with that side of things a bit um, well, no, I think like that's part of the reason why we wanted to do this um, uh, this webinar because I feel like uh, it's still pretty technical for a lot of people, and they have a hard time understanding like what do these uh, performance issues mean. Yeah, so for we're sure. hoping to help more. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Help more. Exactly. Performance is king. <laughs> and then. Uh... Yeah, so I think that sort of wraps up kind of the, the user experience side of things. Um, when it comes to your SEO strategy, it's definitely not a, a set it and forget it kind of mentality. You know, it's something that you need to continue to work towards and work on. And, uh, you know, there are different uh, different aspects of SEO. And the, they usually start off with, uh, with a fork around your on-page and your off-page tactics. And, uh, you know, when it comes to looking at that, you know, you want to make sure you've got your, your keywords in place and for your pillar content. Research your keywords relative to your business and content that you want to rank for. Initially, develop a list derived from the content on your website. Headers are a great place to start, and then you can look at many more keyword tools to assist in sort of expanding what that list looks like. You can include different factors like volume, traffic, possible links, etc. Some tools even include keyword difficulty score, which can assist in narrowing down your list and, and, and getting more achievable keywords. A lot of these advanced tools fall within premium services like an AAHREF or within SEO Moz, or there's different tools out there that can start to really shed some light on these more advanced tools. Simply, if you are running Google AdWords, there's a, there's a keyword generator tool in there. And um, a lot of times you can glean some insights from your Google ad campaigns too, that can help sort of see what resonates from your, your audience based on your marketing efforts too. So it's really important when you start putting together your, your, your SEO strategy to make sure that you've got um, a pretty solid understanding of the keywords that resonate and the ones that you wanna resonate for. 
And uh, usually they're tied to what's called pillar content. And that pillar content is really, you know, if you were to pick three aspects of your business that you want to ensure that Google knows about and ultimately your customers can find about you, then, uh, then th those are the areas that you want to focus around at least to start. And then as you get success in those particular areas, you can start to grow that out. On page, on page is great because it's, it's sort of what I, it's, it's owned media. It's, it's, it's what you've got complete control over and there is a great science around it. There is some art, but um, you know, with regards to on page, that's everything that happens on your website. And uh, I talked about rank math earlier, and it's something that uh, that can definitely help you with your, your on page strategy and uh, and how to make sure that everything is is dialed in you want to make sure that your web page addresses are intuitive based on the content being delivered and we talked a bit about that earlier when we were looking at leaning down the the menu and making a very very simple flow and uh and reducing the number of items in your top level menu the example i always think about is you know if we think about cars.com we've got it's uh, the address is forward slash suv forward slash jeep you know that's a very intuitive kind of web address you know we don't have something like cars.com forward slash red forward slash made in america forward slash jeep you know that's just not that intuitive for google to follow so it's always important to make sure that your your linking structure or what um, what's referred to as permalinks are, are intuitive and, and google can understand them headings on your pages need to be compelling action oriented and if you're able to contain numbers, even better in Google's mind, a lot of uh, what Google's looking for too is uh, at the beginning of your content for questions to be posed and answered quite quickly. And this has been a big theme of late for blog posts, whereas the long format or, you know, probably when I was back in school, maybe, maybe Ben too, I think I'm a bit older though, um, you know, the long form essay where you'd write your, write your introduction paragraph, do your thesis, prove your thesis, essay style. That's sort of not, not resonating with Google much anymore because it, it's just, it's too long in the tooth. And, uh, and really what they're looking for is, is more kind of management executive style writing, which is ask a question, answer the question. And then after that, you can get into more expanded content that can uh, talk about the, the question and answer that you've just, uh, just proposed, but uh, in, in longer form. And, uh, and that seems to be what's resonating best with Google right now. So for anyone on here that is, uh, does have a blogging strategy from a content perspective, that's something to, uh, to consider when you are generating uh, blog, blog content. And there actually are some pretty good websites out there. If you just Google uh, blog, blog writing, blog ideas, that sort of thing, that uh, they can give you a number of, of interesting sort of templates to follow in that space. You want yeah, to show all your image? A, oh. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say we have a great, uh, there's a really good one from HubSpot that we share often um, that is very extensive about how to write good blog posts. If you need great. it, okay. you want to share it. Yeah. Maybe we can do a follow up on the, on the webinar, Ben, share that around possibly or drop it in the chat here. <clears throat> With, uh, with on page, uh, you want to make sure all your images on the site are named intuitively, well optimized, and content relevant alt tags relating to your focus keyword. And these are some of the coaching terms that will uh, will come back from 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 most uh, SEO analysis tools like Rank Math, or if you're using a SEO Moz or Ahrefs and things like that. But um, if not, then you just want to make sure that uh, uh, your main leading image on your particular page or blog is connected to your keyword that's focused for that particular page. So make sure that, uh, that you've got that in place. And um, one of the key pieces as well is to uh, make sure that um, uh, Google's come up with their own uh, next generation format for images. And so it's always a great idea to, to, to lever those technologies too. And um, if you need any help with that, because that gets into a bit of a, a complicated piece, uh, reach out to us. We can kind of walk through some of that stuff as well. The, the next gen format is called WebP. So uh, it's something that's, uh, th th that will help your SEO and also help your performance too. When I talk about backlinks, backlinks are an off-page strategy and, uh, and simply backlinks are just uh, other websites that have links back to your content. It's a very, very long tail approach. And there's, there's tools out there that you can run backlink reports so you can sort of see how, how contents or how people are linking back to you. Uh, within Google Analytics, you can refer to your referral report and you'll start to look at 
sites that are, are linking to your content. But um, from an SEO perspective, there is a strategy around developing more backlinks. So if you have any particular advertisers you're working with, other blogs of relevant content or websites of relevant content, if you're able to do some sort of uh, outreach to these individuals to, to request backlinks to your site, there's definitely a lot of clever ways that you can craft emails to, to do that. Or if you've got a great blog you just posted that you feel is relevant to another business that has a website that can help grow your, your backlink strategy, then you can, you can always reach out to them and, uh, and, and, uh, and propose the idea that you've got a great piece of content here they could link to that's quite relevant to their business. And you know, in doing so, you'll get that coming back to you. If there's blogs that you're active on, creating comments and replies to different content that do link back to relevant content on your site. You do need to be careful that you're not sort of getting called out on uh, sort of self-promotion, but um, you know, I think as long as you're keeping the comments true and authentic, then, uh, then that's uh, that that's a okay. And, uh, and, and if there's any opportunities around that to do that, if you're active on any sort of uh, Facebook groups, those are also great areas where you can, be subject matter experts on what you've got going on and be able to create a lack backlinking strategy around that as well. So those are all, uh, all important tactics in, in, in your backlinks and how to be able to kind of grow that program. Technical SEO is one we sort of talked, uh, touched on a little bit throughout, but um, you know, there are many factors around technical SEO that definitely can, uh, can affect what you've got going on and your ranking with Google. There are definitely a lot of great tools out there. You can audit your site and, and find uh, find what your site health score is. And, uh, and usually you've got a score out of 100. And really, depending upon how many faults you've got or, or, or top or issues that are, are flags with Google, then you'll get a report back on, on, on what your score is. And so if you get a score of 50, that usually means you've got 50 technical problems on your sites that you need to go and resolve. And those problems could be anything from missing title tags, duplicated title tags, duplicated descriptions, uh, 404 broken pages, broken links, things that aren't redirecting properly, image optimization, are your images too large, missing alt tags on your images, and so on and so forth. And uh, you know, again, this is something that, uh, that we here can, can help out with as well. If, uh, if what I'm kind of talking about, uh, your eyes roll back and you're like, ah, oh, just fix it. You know, or if you're ones that just like take your car into the mechanic and make it make it run again, then uh, then there's definitely things we can help out with here, or even make sure that you get connected with uh, with a particular freelancer or or consultant that can that can help you with uh, with the sort of analysis of your of your website. With regards to tools, and what you can use, um, you know, one of the simplest metrics to review is your organic search traffic to see if your SEO is working. So, you know, making sure that you're, you're viewing that data and, and that you're seeing good growth and good results. And uh, as long as you see that, uh, that, uh, that number growing, then uh, simply you're, you're probably doing something right. But um, if you're not seeing that number grow or you're not seeing the, the successes you want there, then, uh, then it's something that you might want to dive a bit deeper into some of the ideas and topics that we've, uh, we've talked about here. And, and if you're not using Google Analytics already, reach out to us because you should be. <laughs> Some of the other tools that are worth looking at, I talked about the Google Keyword Planner and it's, uh, it's right within the Google AdWords interface. And, uh, and so, you know, you can use this for some of your organic, uh, sorry, some of your organic needs. Uh, Yoast SEO, which I talked about as well as Rank Math and then the Google Search Console. And all these are key tools within your, your SEO toolbox and, uh, and should, be, should be worth exploring. I was just gonna hop over into uh, Google's service just to give you a quick rundown on a quick report. I know we're coming close to 11 here now, but I uh, was just gonna give you a quick rundown of a tool that's quite helpful. It's free, it's from Google, and, uh, and what that, uh, how you can take a look at that and, and at least do like a very high level report on what, uh, what your site, uh, how it's performing, or at least how it looks within Google's eyes. So uh, I'll bring it up here. Hopefully it's up on everyone's screen here. So the website's called web.dev and you can navigate over to the, uh, the measure measurement uh, link here, which I'm hovering over. And uh, I'm looking off the side here because I've got a second screen. So <laughs> hopefully you like my, my side profile. Uh, so when you do uh, run an audit based on your site, you'll see that Google has this categorized into four main buckets. 
I've just run mec.ca. I'm sure we've all kind of shopped there in the past. I know I got some nice socks there the other day. It looks at performance, which I talked a lot about and, uh, and how it's scoring. This number is probably the most challenging number for any business right now within Google's eyes. And, uh, and that's the one that's probably gonna be the, the red light for, for most that uh, on this call or on this webinar and, uh, and, and one that you'll probably wanna dive a bit more into. Accessibility, we talked a bit about that. And um, usually most sites score well because accessibility has been something that's been top of mind for quite some time now and um, that sort of thing. So it usually scores okay. Uh, best practices, they've got some things they need to work on here and then the SEO piece as well. So these are the four main buckets that, that Google's looking at when they're evaluating your site and how you're performing. And uh, these first content, full paint, speed index, timed interactive, these are all elements that play into the, uh, the Google Web Core Vitals. And um, that's probably another whole webinar that, that Ben can get sorted out here for us because they're quite, uh, quite technical on what they mean and how you can, you can work with them. But, um, if, uh, if we've got some keeners on the, on the webinar here, by all means, if you want to search web core vitals, there's definitely a lot of content out there that, uh, that you can take in. The great thing about this report is that it does break down your, your issues for you. So you can see based on mec.ca, there's one, two, three, four, five, six high priority items that need to be addressed. And given the performance score that we're seeing here, these are all related to performance, as you can see. Oh, there's one accessibility one here that needs to be addressed. So buttons are, don't have an accessible name. And really that's just titling your buttons. So that's actually a pretty easy fix for most to take care of. But um, eliminate when render blocking resources. What that means is that um, essentially, if you've got some JavaScripts or some style sheets that are at the top of, uh, of your page and, uh, and they're, they're looking to get loaded before any of your other content gets loaded, then those are considered render blocking because that means that nothing's gonna display on your page until those resolve. So what you can do is, uh, is you can actually defer those, those, those render blocking resources to later on the page. As long as they're not critical to the items or elements that are loading high on the page, then, then those can be put to the bottom of that loading sequence, which will help your performance incredibly. A lot of the content that's being rendered on a page by page scenario, is, uh, is leveraging uh, CSS, uh, cascading style sheets. And what you can do is a lot of times a very large style sheet gets loaded for every single page, but the reality is each of those pages don't require every single element that's on that sheet. So being clever in how you're, how you're uh, structuring your style sheet and removing what's not being used and only loading what is being used is a, is a, is a solid performance enhancing strategy that, that should, be, should be considered. And that one's a bit, a bit of a technical and definitely one you probably wanna reach out to your web developer on because it's a, it's a tough one to, to dissect, but um, it, is a, it is always a top on the list here for most. JavaScript falls in that same kind of category. Usually when people are setting up their sites, the a JavaScript calls is being loaded for every single page and, uh, and, and it's not required. So making sure that uh, you're only loading what you need is, uh, is important here. And then server response time, and this is a critical one with performance, which we've talked about and uh, multiple redirects. Obviously, if you've got uh, one URL that's redirecting to another URL, that's redirecting to another URL, obviously that affects that performance piece as well because it's taking time for each of those redirects to, to essentially resolve the next. And, uh, and so that's, uh, that, that's sort of uh, an important one too. So this is just a quick example, you know, hop on your website and, uh, and, and do one of these analysis and see how you score. If there's any sort of red scores you're seeing here, I'd encourage you to, to book, a, book a half hour, an hour console with, uh, with one of us and we can sort of dive a bit deeper. And, uh, and take a look at a, a more detailed lighthouse report, which really does break down each of these elements and, and, and does identify specifically which, which uh, style sheets or which JavaScripts or which images are too large and things like that, and start to kind of chase down some of these gremlins that are appearing on your website and, and getting them fixed. We're a bit over 11, so I apologize for keeping everyone, but hopefully it was valuable. I'm not sure if there's if people have some excess time to take care of any questions or things like that. But um, Ben, if you want to kind of take a look at the, the chat window and see, then we can uh, we can address anything. Or uh, 
if anyone does have any questions that they'd like to do one-on-ones with, then uh, by all means, they can they can reach out and uh, and schedule some time with us. So, Ben, did you see anything coming up in the feed there that anyone has some questions? Um, let's see. Uh, no, I haven't seen any questions um, okay. recently. Um, and um, yeah, so if if anyone um, has any follow-up questions, you can definitely reach out to your um, digital service squad. Would you be able to flip back to the um, end screen of the presentation just so we can show them the uh, contact information? There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, yeah, so thanks Kit for running us through that presentation. I think it was very amazing, uh, very informative. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys found it helpful as well. Um, there will be a recording of this video on the Small Business Enterprise Center uh, YouTube channel. And we'll try and follow up uh, with all of the uh, register registrants uh, to, to send you a link when, when it's available. Um, so yeah, thanks for attending. Um, and uh, here's where you can reach us at um, enterprisecenter.ca slash digital service squad and you can book a consultation at calendly.com slash ssgb underscore digital uh, to book that consultation directly with your squad here in South Georgia Bay. And a reminder, grant deadline is coming up October 31st. Uh, if you haven't registered at digitalmainstreet.ca, uh, go ahead and uh, get that started because time is running out. Um, and a lot of these grants do cover off consultation for SEO and developing strategy and, and bringing on someone that is a, an expert in this space too. So, you know, if you haven't got the grant before, it's something that uh, you can easily uh, run through that process and, uh, and, uh, and apply it to some of these technologies and strategies that we just went through today. Yeah, great point. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, thanks again, Kit. Thank you everyone for joining us. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you.